Oh, I wonder if you can hear me better now. I think the phone was connected to my work headset. <laughs> Let me know if that's different uh, sounding for you, Linda. Hey, Kay. So leave me a note if you guys can hear me. So I'm just going to get this image stamped here. Oh, great. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be talking to myself this whole time. <laughs> well, I, kind of, I sort of am, but at least you can hear me as well. So what are you ladies up to tonight? Anything exciting? That turned out pretty cute, but I want to darken that up a little bit since black is a pretty significant color in this image here. So I was, I'm doing this card for the Sew in Love February inspiration since uh, it's all about hand stitching. <laughs> ah, great. Much better, huh? <laughs> Linda, you can't hear? Uh oh Oh, you're not up to anything. That's I see what you're saying. Great. Yeah, I think my phone was connected to my headset, which was laying on the other side of my room um, at my work desk. So, <laughs> but all right. So um, for those of you who joined a little bit later, I'm using this stamp here from Penny Black. It's called Embroidered 4250K. And I'm just... Uh, making a little card tonight for the hashtag so in love February um, inspiration series that we have going. So I thought that'd be a cute little image to share with you guys. So I'm gonna get it colored up and then make a card and uh, see how we all turn out here. So I'm gonna, um, See about coloring this with Copic markers. I don't think this is Copic, um, necessarily Copic friendly paper. So we'll just do the best we can here. It'll probably be okay with my little splotchy coloring. <laughs> I never get things too seriously blended. So I think we'll be just fine. I'm gonna use the E40 here to start out his face. And get some little stripes down here. I think I'll color this one like, like a tiger striped kitty. So uh, some tans and black. I think that'd be cute. And I might leave the tip of its tail white. Okay, you just sent me an email. Uh oh, I wonder what it's about. <laughs> ah. So are you guys um, 
happy tomorrow is Friday. I know I am. Oh my goodness. It's been a very, very long week. So I am looking forward to a weekend, that's for sure. I'm using E42 now just to darken up these little tan areas of this kitty. Such a cute little image. I really like um, Margaret Sherry's artwork. And then I'm going to use E43 next, which is uh, dull ivory. Then I think I'm going to reach for some darker browns um, to include as well. <laughs> hey, Rhonda. Hi, Christy. Glad you could join. <clears throat> this is only the second live I've done. Um, so they're just kind of, they've just been kind of spur of the moment. Um, one of these days, I'll probably be prepared enough to announce something a little bit um, further in advance. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think this is really cute. So I'm going to um, add some darker brown to the areas where the black is so that those uh, areas don't have any white in them necessarily, at least not a whole bunch of white anyways. So just blobbing along here. I was curious if you guys had another coloring medium that you'd like to see as well, and I can plan that for maybe in my next video. So maybe you guys want to see watercolor, or if you're interested in seeing um, that the vintage watercolor technique, um, which I so love to do, um, or if you'd like to see incorporated uh, colored pencils into Copic coloring. So if you guys have a preference, let me know. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of pink to his cheeks. It's been super cold here, Kay. We, um, my goodness, it was like single digits this morning when we got up, yesterday morning when we got up, and uh, it's supposed to get down to like 10 degrees tonight as well. That's really cold. I am going to use the colorless blender here to kind of blend out the pink on the kitty's cheeks. So it's not quite so in your face pink. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of pink to the inside of his ears too, but I'm going to use a lighter pink. I'm going to use R11 instead of R20. Just to give a little hint of pink up in there. All right, I'm going to move on to coloring the little accessories around him. Uh, we did get snow. We had about an inch of snow this morning. It's a little too cold to snow. <laughs> so maybe when it warms up a little bit, we'll get a little bit more snow. But hopefully we're just about done with all that nonsense for this year. So I'm going to color the embroidery hoop E13 or E13. I've chosen some pretty fun papers for this card. Something a little um, unexpected, I think. It's unexpected for me anyways. So I think they'll be fun. So that was uh, E13, and I'm going to use E15 to kind of give those a little bit of shadow there. Earlier, I was watching the uh, men's Gonzaga basketball game on TV. That was fun. It's not over yet, but I uh, got tired of just sitting and watching. <laughs> so I thought I would make myself useful. I'm going to color the fabric on the um, embroidery hoop with a little bit of E50. Just give a little bit of depth to this, kind of like it's a older 
tea towel that's being embroidered. My Aunt Patty, she's probably watching this right now. Hi, Patty. <laughs> um, she does amazing um, embroidery work. And she makes quilts and she she knits. She makes beautiful um, knit scarves and she makes amazing things. She cross stitches. Pretty amazing crafter. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hi, Kathy. Melissa, by the way, I saw your note at the end of last week's live where you said that you'll see me soon. <laughs> yes, I will see you soon. All right, I am going to add a little bit of pink um, and green, I think, um, to the embroidery area. Hey, Jackie, how's it going? Hi, Shirley. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of pink so it looks like there's some embroidered flowers there. I'm going to use R20 and then I'm going to pull in some darker like a raspberry type pink too. So I'm going to use that one and I'm going to use um, R3, R35. There we go. And now I think I'm going to color the um, the little pin cushion here um, with R R two R two nine, so it's a little bit um, oranger of a red, and then I'm going to use that R three five then to add some darker shading. So this red is really, really red. I'm having to be really careful because this is not necessarily paper that you would necessarily use for Copic coloring. So I'm having to be really careful in, in case this uh, paper makes the red really bleed. I don't want to be too far outside my um, stamped lines here. So there's that. I'm going to use um, R14, I think, for some lighter areas. Yeah, Jackie, this kitty is a um, Penny Black image. Isn't it cute? It is from 2012 and it's called Embroidered. It's very, very cute. I thought it would be cute for um, the Sew and Love February inspiration that um, we have going on this month. So there we go. Now we've got some little highlights on our pin cushion. Isn't that where everybody needs highlights on their pincushion? <laughs> I am also going to add some turquoise. I'm going to add some turquoise there to the little pin heads. And this is BG45. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of turquoise, just a hint of it to these little scissors. And then I'm going to add some gray to them as well. So they just have a little hint of color here. And I'm going to use a cool gray too. So C2 for that scissor. go and I think I might add in some C4 as well. Do I ever color Siamese cats? Um, I don't know if I have. We have a um, we have a cat that's probably part Siamese anyway. His name is Soda Cracker <laughs> because he's white and has little light brown tipped ears. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hi, Barb. I'm glad you could join. Hi, Michaela. I'm just catching up on the comments here. <laughs> so nice you guys could join. Thank you so much. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and color my embroidery floss here, um, the same colors that I have in my um, embroidery as well. So I'm going to go with the um, R29. And I um, probably going to have a hard time following these little threads here around this kitty, but we'll give her a go. Looks like this red one goes up here. Whew, making me earn it with this paper. <laughs> Let's see, where would the red one go next? Mm, I'm going to go over here. And then I'm going to color this little skein down here red. There we go. Hi, Karen. Hey, Tina. I'm glad you could join, Tina. I just did a spur of the moment live video here to see who was available and wanted to hang out for a little while. I'm also going to color one of these little embroidery flosses um, green since I have some green here in my embroidery. There we go. And now I think I want to add some um, detail to the little um, bindings on the pin cushion as well. And I think I'm going to use um, yellow. I think grandma's pin cushion had yellow um, cording around it. I don't actually have one of these pin cushions myself. I just have to remember what grandma's look like. <laughs> oh. All right. So there's the image colored so far. So I am going to pop over to the other side of the room and I'm going to die cut it with a um, circle die. So I will be right back. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. And if you guys can, you should be able to still hear me. Um, I use the... Um, Anna Griffin Impress uh, die cutting machine. Um, I'm really tempted by the Sizzix switch one because you could die cut the thicker dies at the same, you know, with the same machine. But it's not in my future for <laughs> a long time. This um, Anna Griffin machine works really well for the thinlet dies. And it works really well for embossing folders, too. <clears throat> All right. So there I've cut it uh, with just a Sizzix, um, or a, excuse me, a Spellbinders circle die. So nothing fancy. So um, I'm going to move my markers out of the way here. Push, push, push. All right, so I've selected some kind of fun papers. They're a little bit um, more wild than I'm used to. I decided to use this On Trend pad from Crate Paper. So it's got really bright florals um, and it's got fun geometric patterns as well. 
and this is not new. This is from 2012. <laughs> so <laughs> for those of you who would like to be able to find the papers that I use, I'm sorry, I just don't use very new papers. <laughs> I have so many in my stash, I just have to pull from my stash and um, use what I'm inspired by. So this has really fun images in it, though. It's got some little like cheetah prints, zebra print. I love this turquoise flower. This is a really pretty floral here, too. And then there's a little bit of mustard yellows in it, which I love. And then there's this beautiful floral here, which is one of the um, designs I chose to use on my card. So I've pulled out some of those and um, already prepared them. So I've cut this piece here at uh, four by five and a quarter. And then I've cut a mat for it at, uh, what is it, four and five eighths um, by five and three eighths. No, five and an eighth by five and three eighths. So I'm going to adhere these two together. A little bit of glue there. Barb, I like your kitty story. <laughs> so that's cute. I'm going to add some faux stitching, of course, with my tracing wheel. And just give this a quick little zip around here. And then I am going to figure out the layout of my card. This is such a big image, um, but I didn't really want to cut any of it down. So I'm going to have the top of that circle, I think, but up right next to that edge of the paper at the top. And then I think I'm going to use a couple of these strips here. Um, possibly under the card. I know what I'll do. I am going to use these two pieces here and create a little layer down here to give some interest to the sides here where this circle is going to come and let this paper be exposed. So I'm going to add a couple little strips down here. Use my grid pattern here on the desk to make my paper strips line up straight. Oh, Barb, I'm glad you were able to get a tracing wheel. I love this thing, it's my favorite tool. <laughs> favorite, favorite tool. In fact, I have several of them here on my desk. <laughs> I'm going to put um, some faux stitching along this edge here. And then I'm going to add this piece of paper as well. So it's kind of like a little cheetah print. Um, actually, I'm going to use the one that I have that's cut that's slightly narrower so I can see a little bit more of that uh, wood grain layer. I use this one here. Hmm. 
There we go. That's cute. A little different than my usual style. Hmm. All right, and I'm going to give that layer a good um, run of the tracing wheel as well, even though most of it won't be seen, but I at least know it's there. In case somebody dissects my card, <laughs> it'll be complete. <laughs> okay, the chickens are good. They are hanging in there with the cold weather. Just hanging in there. I'm going to go over to my paper cutter and snip a little bit of this off. They should start laying eggs soon, Kay. In the winter time, they kind of take a break and become freeloaders. <laughs> but soon enough, we'll, we will have eggs coming out of our ears. <clears throat> All right, so I like that better. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add some twine to this before I adhere this down. And I'm just gonna use um, this twine that I've been using a lot lately. It's the May Arts uh, Jute in the color SM09. Oh, and there was, shoot, I can't remember who it was. Somebody was asking me um, a while ago in comments, um, they said that they've been having trouble finding um, the lighter colored seam binding. Um, you can find like the links that I've provided in my videos um, are all out of stock. Well, when I was poking around, um, poking around on the May Arts website um, yesterday evening, I noticed that they have um, seam binding, rolls of seam binding, and it's actually in stock in the lighter colors. So if you're looking for seam binding so you, that you can tea dye it, um, check the May Arts website. They do sell to customers, so they don't just sell wholesale, they sell to customers too. Um, so you might check their site if that's something you've been looking for. Hi, Valentina. Glad you could join us. Hope you're keeping cozy up there, way up north. Uh, Melissa, Oliver is getting along with the rest of the animals just fine. I think um, he loves them. They tolerate him. <laughs> I think that's a fair assessment. <laughs> um, but he actually is going to be coming with me. Um, Melissa. So you will, you will probably get to meet him at some point. Um, this is really loose. So I'm going to actually just um, add a little bit of tape here. I'm going to um, make it the uh, twine on the backside bend like this. And I'm going to add a little bit of tape so that it takes the little um, the uh, looseness out of that twine. I don't want to have to undo my bow. So this is my cheater trick. <laughs> so that keeps it a little bit more snug there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add my kitty now. I'm going to add him over the twine. like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of foam adhesive to the back. So Melissa, I'm going to be driving. <laughs> Crazy as that may seem. <laughs> um, I am going to be teaching a class down in California this later this year. And it's actually where Melissa lives. So I'll get to meet her. I'm excited. All 
So I'm just adding a little bit of foam adhesive here. And uh, then we'll be able to stick this down. I'm trying to decide if I want to ink my edges a little bit. I think I do. I think I'm just going to use whatever ink might be left on my brush here um, from my last project just to give it a little light, light brown. Um, Barb, I am teaching at the Cat's Meow. Um, great, what is it? Uh, the Great Stamp Escape in uh, Yosemite or near Yosemite in April. Um, no, I don't actually teach classes in Washington. I do not. Um, we have a we have a store near here, um, but they've never asked me to teach classes, so they probably don't even know who I am. All right, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. I like the way that that ink looks, and I like the uh, placement where this is going to go next to that bow. And I think I'm going to also add one of my trusty standby um, pearl buttons, too. That is really cute. All right, and now I think I'm going to add uh, one of these little pearl buttons. And I think I have a piece of twine here. <laughs> Melissa. <sighs> Hi, Paula. So glad you could join us. We are uh, just hanging out pretty casual here, trying not to get too carried away with this live video action here. <laughs> All right, I have my hot glue gun uh, plugged in and ready to go. So I am going to use that. I'm going to actually um, cut this twine shorter so it's not sticking out of my into my bow. So I'm going to actually use this glue gun here to add a little dabble of glue. Put that button in place. All right, so now I'm going to do a little bit of decorating on the inside of my card before I adhere this down. I find that that makes it a little bit easier because the uh, bulkiness of the things on the front can make it a little challenging to get things lined up okay. So I'm going to um, use a couple extra pieces of paper that I have um, from the paper pad and just put them inside here. And I think I have three pieces here. So I'm just going to add um, a couple of them to the inside, and then I'll add something to the back as well. I really love this floral image, so I'm going to use this one. And I think I'll use this kitty print one. I think that's cute. Hi, Lynn Irwin. <laughs> How are you? I'm going to put that little kitty print down there at the bottom, and then I'm going to butt up that um, floral print right, print right next to it. And I think that'll be cute. And then I'll let that floral print wrap around to the back side, where I'll also add a little bit of that um, wood grain paper as well. I'm doing okay, Linda. Thank you. 
just hanging out. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I had been watching a basketball game on TV and got tired of just sitting. So I thought I'd come in here and make a card for the um, So in Love February inspiration series. I had been wanting to use this cute little kitty image uh, from Penny Black. And so I thought it was the perfect time to do so. I'm just going to snip that off. Usually I'll trim my edges off with my paper cutter, but I don't want to, I don't want to run over there for you. All right. So there we have, oops, now we've had a little glue there. I'll have to let that dry and um, wipe it off with my, um, my little eraser that I have, my glue eraser. So I'm going to press that down and I'm also going to add some faux stitching here as well to these two little pieces. It's one of the things I really like doing is if I'm going to do something on the front of the card, I want to kind of mirror that technique on the inside. So you'll see me like ink the edges of the inside of my card, all four, all four um, sides of my card. And then I like if I'm going to add any uh, paper details like this, I'll use um, faux stitching or something like that to them as well. I think it's just a nice finishing touch and it doesn't take any time at all. So there's that. Uh oh, did you guys lose me? I think the uh, video stalled. Can you guys still see the video? It looks like it's stalled for me. I'm going to keep going because maybe it's just my home computer. Still moving. Okay, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Thanks, Barb. <laughs> my <laughs> my home video stalled uh, long ago, so we'll keep we'll keep moving along. All right. So I've got my um, inside and the back all decorated. I'm going to use this little um, eraser. I picked it up at the Dollar Tree the other day. Um, it's just a little gummy eraser, and it picks up the tackiness from glue. So. And it works pretty well. You just push it down against the glue there and it picks it right up. So like it was never even there, but you do need to wait for it to dry. You want that glue to dry before you start smooshing it, smooshing it around because then it'll just smear it around. But it works pretty, pretty great. All right, so I am going to go ahead and, oh, I see I've got glue on my mat here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and adhere my um, card front now. Cute, cute. I don't know what sentiment I'm going to put on the inside yet because uh, I don't know who I'm going to send this to. So I'll leave the sentiment area blank for now. Um, actually, I think I'll put, instead of putting um, white, uh, wet adhesive on here, I'm going to put some foam adhesive. So that it doesn't have any issues there with that twine. Now my twine got underneath there, so I need to pull that out. There we go. Perfect. And then I'll put a little bit more on here as well. Well, I'm glad the video is still going for you guys because it hasn't even started up again for me. <laughs> so I'll have to watch this back and see what happened after my video stalled. <laughs> Probably everything exciting. I'm missing it. <laughs> I'm going to put a fourth layer on here too. This tape uh, roll that I got, I think it may have been old. Um, it's not very sticky. So what I like to do is actually put um, wet adhesive on here as well. Once I get these uh, release papers off of here, I'll put a little bit of wet adhesive on here too, and that'll make this stick down really nicely. Yeah, I noticed the um, edges of it are kind of yellowed. That tells me it's kind of an older pro older product, but that's okay. I didn't pay very much money for it, so 
I have a solution around its lack of tackiness. So I'll just give it a quick dabble of glue. And now it'll be good as new. And adding that wet adhesive as, as well allows you uh, a little bit of wiggle room. You can shimmy it, shimmy it around a little bit too, so, which is not a bad thing. There we go. So there is one cute kitty card. I've got a little twine up here, so I'll give that a trim. One card for the So and Love February inspiration. There's the inside. And then the back side, I'll also stamp uh, my handmade stamp by and give it a signature and send this off to someone crafty. So here's the stamp that I used tonight. It's uh, again, it's from Penny Black and it's from the 2012 collection for Margaret Sherry. And the uh, number is 4250K and it's called Embroidered. So really, really cute. And then the paper pad that I used, in case you missed that, uh, was this one here from Crate Paper and it's called On Trend. Really, really cool. Uh, let's see, Minerva, that is a stamp -a jig It is this tool here. And that's what you want to search for, stamp-a-ma-jig. And it comes with, uh, if, usually if you buy it new, it'll come with um, some um, imaging sheets as well which look like this, and you'll get uh, three or four, I think, in a package. Ha -ha, Karen, thanks. I'm so glad. <laughs> so, um, so Minerva, this is, uh, this is the tool that you're looking for, I think. And then to use this tool, I'll just give you a quick little demo here. Um, what you would do is you would um, stamp your you would position your um, tool here up to the corner of the imaging sheet, and then you would um, ink up your stamp, and you would stamp it down on the imaging sheet, and then that's going to give you an image that you can use to place over your cardstock so that you know you have um, your stamped image exactly where you want it to be uh, before you go ahead and stamp it. So then you'd place your cardstock down. And you can probably see that really, really faintly. Um, but for example, if your um, stamp is mounted crooked on your block, this is a really good way to make sure that your stamp is straight uh, when you stamp it. Um, it's really a great way to use sentiments to make sure that they're positioned exactly where you want it. So once you have that imaging sheet then exactly where you want your image stamped, then you put your tool back in place at the corner of the imaging sheet and you remove the image sheet and then you ink up your stamp again and stamp it down and it will be in exactly the spot that you had it um, positioned with your sheet. So it is a handy dandy little tool. So I hope that's helpful. Hi Gigi. <laughs> uh, the Bavarian Hospitality Santa. Ooh, yes. I will. He's the one in the green outfit, isn't he? I could do that, Kay. <laughs> you're welcome, Minerva. Hi, Gigi. Hope you're having a good night. Keeping warm. It's getting cold down where you guys are. All right, so I think we're about done here. Um, we were able to make a card for the February Inspiration Series. I was able to use some crazy paper that I hadn't used before that's a little bit out of my style, but I really love the colors. And uh, we have a really cute little card to, to share with a friend. So I am super excited to be able to share these things with you. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks so much for all the fun in the chat. Oh, hi, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Pamela. Oh, and Tammy, too. Yes, thanks, guys, so much. So, thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.